Hey everyone, hope you're enjoying your CrinkleCon so far. I know I'm really excited to be here, uh, being able to share some stuff that I've learned with you guys. It's really exciting to be at the North Pole this weekend too. Thank you to Sansa for the invite. Took a lot of time to get up here. I, I thought uh, flights to the UK were bad, but it's been a lot of fun so far and it's great to see you all. And more importantly, I'm just so, how many chances do you get to share holiday themed hacking tricks with people? So I've brought to you um, something that I like to think of as we spend all this time on these uh, more complicated tools or scripts that people have written, but sometimes we forget that it's the simple things that really make a difference. And there's just something so classically nefarious about looking at what we've already got access to, what might be under our noses, and seeing if we can use that to get a little bit more in depth on our tests. So I'm hoping this helps you out a little bit, but I'm also noticing that our we, we've, we've kind of like teamed up with this guy for, for this talk. He's called the Grinch. I don't know if you guys know him. He's known more for uh, physical pen testing, but he agreed to help us out today. But he's looking kind of not like you and me. He looks a little like, ah, there we go. Much better. Looks just like us. Good to go. So here's the setup. The Grinch has kind of helped us out already. He's set up a phishing page for us, and he's sent out an email to the users of Whoville with a fake login page and a holiday software update, maybe some nice new screensavers so they can see some falling snow when they're away from their computers, but it's actually our MSF Venom payload. So MSF Venom has packaged a meterpreter payload for us, and when meterpreter is executed on that workstation by a user, it gives us a sort of an advanced reverse shell that we can use in the Metasploit framework. So we've got access inside this network, and we've got credentials. How lucky are we? Even if we're a limited user, we've got a pretty good foothold to work with. This Grinch guy doesn't seem half bad, right? We've, we've all been listening to this holiday music for so long, and we don't want to admit how catchy it is, right? So maybe we'll just pretend to be a little bit grinchy, a little bit grumpy for now. And if we catch ourselves humming along to the soundtrack, we'll, we'll just ignore that for now. So anyways, here's our setup. We can kind of think about what other other access do we have to users in the network, some business applications maybe in Whoville, who knows, their Christmas tree organizing, that looks pretty juicy. And we've got some support, maybe there's some really valuable stuff over there that might even let us get domain admin one day, right? And for those of you who know a little bit of the setup already, I can already hear you practically screaming, oh man, I know what's next, right? I've got my favorite tools. I've got Bloodhound, and I'm going to test these credentials against every system we have. I'm going to scan the entire network for vulnerabilities, and we're just going to get in so fast. We're going to get so much. We're going to Kerbero stuff. It's going to be great. And you're right. It is going to be great. But in the meantime, some of those scans might take a little bit, right? A little while to run. And maybe we're trying to crack some stuff that we've already got, but if we're cracking a ticket, we can't use that yet. What are, what are we gonna do in the meantime, right? Or maybe we've mapped a path out to domain admin, but we don't have the credentials to get there yet. What else can we do? So while we wait, right, we could make coffee, we could pretend we're not humming along to Christmas songs, or we could try looking around maybe a little bit simpler for now. So here's the setup. This is our strategy, right? I'm Katie Knowles, just for context. I'm your speaker and co-conspirator today, along with the Grinch. I'm also a security consultant and pen tester with MWR Info Security. And what we're gonna be doing is searching for Samba shares on the internal network we've got a foothold in. We're gonna find sensitive files, and we're gonna look for some administrative leftovers that might give us administrative credentials right off the bat. You never know what you're gonna find. It's a lot of fun to look around for this stuff. Starting right off, we're going to be looking internal to the network, right? So we're going to be looking for Samba services on ports 139 and 445 TCP for now. And we're just going to try and understand where systems with open Samba shares are. Once we have we know what systems have those shares, we'll be using the credentials we've got for now to see what access we can have. And we're also going to be trying to understand you know, what files are on those shares. This is usually the point where I like switching over to the Windows command line. The reason for that is it's a little bit easier to work with. There are definitely ways to do this in Linux as well, and I encourage you to try them out. But sometimes it's just a little bit easier to use Meterpreter's 
a sort of advanced reverse shell access and drop into a Windows command line shell, network mount the drive, so that net use, and then use things like find string, so find sure, or search for directories that contain keywords. And you notice you can use a wildcard approach or a quote. There's a bunch of different flags you can explore here. But in my experience, this will be a little quicker to find us what we want. Switching over to our sort of demo network, right? We, we don't have live demos today, but we've got some evidence, right, of, of what we've been able to find. We're going to have to pivot this traffic. And you might notice this isn't something I mentioned before, right? In this case, we've got our meterpreter foothold on a workstation of a user, but we still need a way for our traffic to get there, right? I need my traffic from Metasploit or my traffic from Kali Linux to go through into their network. And the way we're gonna make that happen here for this example is we're gonna use a SOX proxy. So we're gonna set up the Metasploit framework SOX proxy, configure that to run through our, Metas our interpreter session. And then we're gonna be able to run commands like proxy chains that go through the SOX proxy and let us run our tools against the network as if we had access to those addresses. So once we've got that running, you'll notice we can use that nmap command very similarly to how we would before, and we can get some responses from things. I don't actually have the nmap output here. The funny thing about this is you'll notice as proxy chains tries to connect to each port, it actually gives you whether it was able to contact that port or not. So we can definitely wait for our nmap results. But we're also starting to see some port 445 that's already open in this case. Another way to do this sort of thing would be purely through Metasploit. You can use the multi-manage auto route module, which lets you auto route traffic that's in Metasploit through that interpreter session to the network and then scan within Metasploit if, if you really want to. I kind of like sticking to the tools that I've got that I'm used to once I've got the proxy set up, but whatever works for you and I definitely encourage you to try things. So, all right, we, we found a share that's open. For some reason, 31 looked good to us, right? 10, 1, 1, 31, it's got a ring to it almost. So we're gonna look at that share. And the reason I've switched over to SMB map in this case, the reason I like it so much is it's gonna tell us what access our account has, what permissions we have for each share we've got. So we've got access, it looks like to the Yville share and something called home. Now home, that can be pretty interesting sometimes, right? It has a lot of users' home files, maybe, if the permissions aren't set right. Who knows what's over there? But for now, we're just going to look at the Yville share. And what you don't see here is that I've done one of those net use commands, and I've mounted the Yville share, which is now the Z drive, on the compromised station. So now we, we know what user we've compromised, right? It's Cindy. And Cindy's workstation now has this drive mounted. And maybe that seems a little suspicious, but we're just gonna go with it for today for simplicity's sake. We're gonna look for passwords in that Yville share that we've mounted. And we'll notice that there's already some stuff showing up. And we'll also notice that the home directory is also in the Yville share. So sometimes things like this happen, right? Multiple folders end up in multiple places. But in this case, what we wanna focus on is that the Facebook password is here. And this is not a domain account, right? This isn't quite as exciting as we were hoping, but it's something. And if we're gonna test different users around the network, or if we're gonna, maybe Cindy has an administrative account, right? You never know when passwords are gonna be reused or when they're going to have very similar likenesses to each other. Some other interesting terms you might search for, uh, I've listed below. One thing to note here that I I want to call out specifically is always be careful of the scope. So when we're on a client's assessment, when we're testing someone else's network, we want to be really careful what we do and don't look at. So there's going to be some files there that we probably will want to know if people can access them. But when it comes to stuff like HR data or personal information, you might not want to touch it, right? You should always check first, double check against what you can and can't access, and just when in doubt, you know, don't touch it or ask whoever your contact is. All right, so that didn't get us what we were hoping for just yet, but we've got other tr tricks up our sleeve, right? We've got the sysball share. So every domain controller is gonna contain a sysball samba share. 
And the reason this exists is to contain scripts and group policy settings that systems need to pull in order to be part of the domain. The downside to this is that there can be some really, well, upside for us, right? There can be some really interesting information left behind. And historically, it hasn't been the most secure place either. So in this case, we're just gonna talk first about the scripts. So scripts are things that administrators might have provided for a system to get set up, right? Changing local passwords or connecting to certain systems with credentials. And a lot of the times they can be unencrypted. If you go around something like um, the TechNet or any sort of PowerShell galleries or who knows what scripts are out there, right? And who knows how secure those scripts are. If I'm an admin and I need to get something configured yesterday, I might not be paying attention to that. Or I might not know that, that every authenticated user has access to the sysfall share and that people might check it. So you never know what's gonna be on here. That's the other thing. Sometimes there's other stuff, not even scripts or uh, what we're about to talk about, but just other information that system administrators have kept. So it's always a good idea to check up on this. In our Whoville network, this ends up looking a little bit like, so we check up on the share, we notice we've got access to the sysball share and we mount it. Once that's mounted, the directory of it has this scripts folder. Now, for the sake of time, we're not going to go into the scripts just yet, but we are about to look at that policies folder right above it. Here it is. So this is probably the most nefarious of today's tricks, in my opinion. There's something very satisfying uh, and evil about this. The group policy preferences are stored under the policies folder. And until very recently, they allowed the storage of an administrator password that would be configured. This is a local administrator account to be specific. This is not a domain administrator or a help desk administrator. It's just when you log in with, log in with a local admin password on a system, but you need a way to configure that, right? So if I'm trying to configure 50 systems or 100 systems or 500 systems, I'm not gonna do that manually. In this case, you could set the C password attribute and it would be encrypted with a key that Microsoft exposed, right? A static key, but it would be, it would be encrypted, right? It, it should be fine and stored in that policies folder. So in this case, if we have access to the policies folder, we have access to the policy preferences, and we have access to the C password string, and we have access to the AES key that used to encrypt it, it's, yeah, right. So there's already a tool for this built into Kali Linux. It's called GPP Decrypt. It's pretty simple. Here's a little bit of how it works. So in this case, we've mounted the sysfall share. We're searching for passwords in the sysfall share and we've got one of those C password strings. So we copy it, put it down in front of GPP Decrypt, and what do you know? We've got a local administrator password. Who knows where else that's gonna be useful. So that one might be good to check around. And depending on the network or the configuration or the way they administer things, at this point, we might have a pretty you know, hefty pile of uh, credentials that we could test while our other tests are still going on. So what do you think? That was our master plan. We can see what shares are exposed and see what information is lying around in them. You never know what's gonna be there, honestly. The configuration of these is, it's really tough to handle. And that's why it's important to check up on these. And also when you find these sorts of things, if you're on an engagement, it's so, so important to help the client understand that this matters, right? People don't always know, especially about the group policy preferences and things that go in sysfall and taking the time to make sure they understand the risk there and just how easy that was can go a long way. There's a lot of different ways to do this. And for some of you who are more experienced testers, I'm guessing this whole time you were thinking, oh, but that's two lines with this one tool I know. And you're right, it's pretty easy. But going through the basic steps of it with some commands that are a little bit you know, closer to the ground, easier to understand, maybe that living off the land approach gives us an approach to make sure we know what's going on with those tools. So for those of you who are newer to this, if this was the first time you saw it, I absolutely encourage you to go out and try some other ways of doing it and some different tools and approaches. And the other features of those tools might lead you down a path to some other you know, amazing surprises and who knows what other features you might find. So 
that was our holiday heist. I hope you have a happy holiday season and try new tricks on your adventures and most importantly, enjoy KringleCon and help Santa understand uh, the importance of security. Obviously, we're all here today, right? So he definitely cares about security, but we're here to make that communication, that translation, right? We gotta make it happen so that all these uh, North Pole breaches stop happening. All right, thanks so much. Hope you have a great one.